People are very afraid of heart attacks. And of course, because heart attacks and cardiovascular disease is the number one leading cause of death in the world with COVID or without COVID. Even during the years of the pandemic, cardiovascular disease and everything related to it, every single cardiometabolic problem still are the first cause of death in the world. If you go to every single country, it's going to be the first cause of death in the world. And people for this, it's funny because people think that you have diseases caused by habits and you're going to fix those diseases with medications. And with these conditions, we have high lipids or high cholesterol in our blood. And the only thing that we think that we need to do for this is take statins. And most of the time it is that we're taking so much statins right now in the world that people think that if you have high cholesterol, it's maybe because you have a statin deficiency. And people, we have like two groups, people that are highly afraid of taking statins because they think they're bad or they're evil and you shouldn't be taking them at all. And people that think that statins are completely perfect and you need to take them from when you're 30 and you can take them until you're 90 because with that, you're going to prevent every single chance of getting cardiovascular disease. And it's not the point in here and it's not the point in here. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what is a statin, who should be taking it, why do people take it, how does it work, what are the dangers of taking statins, what are the concerns of taking statins? What should you do if you have symptoms related to statins? So please follow me till the end because we're going to go through and you're going to have all the information regarding statins. So let's get started. So first of all, what are statins? Well, statins is a kind of medication and they have a very, very nice mechanism of action. What they do is they block the production of cholesterol in your liver. The liver, it's one of the widely producers of cholesterol in the body. The liver can produce the molecule of LDL. Please remember that LDL is not cholesterol. LDL is a protein. It's a particle that carries cholesterol inside. But in the liver, you also produce HDL, what people call the good cholesterol, which is not good or bad. HDL, it's also a particle. It's a protein that carries cholesterol as well. What's the difference? The difference is LDL, it's the particle that carries from the liver to the tissue because tissues, we need cholesterol. We need cholesterol in our membrane. I'm going to tell you during this video why this is very important for you to know because this might be very important for your health. And HDL, why do we think that it's good? Because it's the one that brings from the tissue back to my liver whenever there's cholesterol that we don't need and it brings it so we can reutilize it or that we can just put it down through our bile and eliminate that cholesterol. So this is why people get this mechanism. There is also another mechanism that it's widely accepted nowadays, and there is another particle called ApoB. ApoB, it's a well-known and well-studied protein that rolls and binds around the LDL particle. ApoB, it's more hereditary. It's something that you might inherit from your parents. And this one, it's really, really one of the novel things that we know nowadays, 2023, that it's more related to cardiovascular disease. So when we think of this, maybe you might think, well, this, this might be a good idea because maybe if I have a high cholesterol, then I might be, I might need to take statins and yeah, maybe yeah. And if you have high ApoB levels, for sure, you need to be taking a statin, maybe not daily, maybe twice a week. You need to talk to your doctor to see what's the right dose for you. But do these kind of medications have any adverse effects? Of course they do. Number one is the most widely seen side effect is muscle pain or muscle cramps or what we call myalgia or myopathy. And sometimes studies show that the percentage of people that have myalgia or that have muscle pain, it's very little. But when you start seeing patients, it's something that people really, really tell you that they're feeling. This is something that if you're taking statins, you should talk to your doctor right over because this might lead to a very, very hard condition that it's called when you might get muscle necrosis. So please, if you're starting to have muscle pain, 
please talk to your doctor. The second reaction that it's very widely seen, it's the alteration in the liver functions. This alteration is when you get a blood test and you see that the patients have high AST and high ALT or high GGT, which are regular tests that your doctor might be taking in your blood, might get a little bit higher. However, these tests might get higher and this is just something that after you take off the medication they start going down so if you see when you when we have patients in status we should be taking this kind of tests maybe once every six months or at the beginning you might get the test maybe in a month or in two months after starting on the medication so we can see if the patient has any kind of reaction in his liver because of the dose or because of the kind of a medication and what should we do in this case is maybe change it for a different one on the same group or change it to another group completely different of medication. Number three, which is very common with a lot of medications is GI or gastrointestinal problems such as vomiting, nausea, abdominal pain, but this again, it's gonna go away once you get off the medication. And number four, it's also very seen with a lot of medications is to have a skin reaction. And you may be asking to yourself, okay, but what is the best way to get the medication and which is the right dose? The right dose is going to depend on any specific case because your dose might be much different to your neighbors. Your dose is gonna be completely independent on every single case. And please remember this, the best time to take the medication is at night because the enzyme that I talked to you before, which is the mechanism of action, it works at night especially. So the best time to take statins is at night. And another question that is very frequent is, for how much time do I need to be taking the medication? Well, that depends on your antecedents. That depends on if you have cardiovascular disease or if you have a risk of cardiovascular disease. It depends on your levels of cholesterol. It depends your, on your levels of ApoB. But most of the time, people, when they get on the medication, they're not gonna get off the medication because most of the time when your doctor thinks that you need to be taking the medication is because you have a risk or because you already have a disease in which you should be taking the medication for a long time. So please talk to your doctor. Another frequent question is, may I take alcohol while I'm taking statins? And the short answer is yes, but you need to be aware not to take big quantities of alcohol if you have any side effect with the medication with the liver tests that I just told you because when you mix that it's not a good idea but if you don't have any alteration in your liver function if you take some alcohol in moderation it would be fine. Another question is what happens if I'm pregnant? Well for pregnant women they should not take these kind of medications because the risk is to get malformations in the baby. So now we're going to talk about these myths which are false about the medication. So number one is that statins are toxic or are poison or are very dangerous and that depends on how you want to see it. Because if you're taking medications just because you have a cholesterol of 201 and because the guides say that they should be under 200 and you're going to take a lot of the medication, then you're taking something that it's completely unnecessary. But for people that really need it, when you have cardiovascular disease, when you have a high risk because you have a high ApoB, and this risk is very important to be lowered. So taking the medication is going to be really necessary for you. Who needs it, really needs it. Who don't, doesn't need it. Number two is that increasing thought that statins might lead to cancer. And we cannot say no. We cannot say that it's completely unrelated. We can say that today we don't have enough information and we don't have clinical trials and we don't have enough information showing that this could lead to cancer. But what do we do? We need to keep our mind open and we need to always, as with every single medication that it's out in the market, we need to be always looking at the possible side effects because maybe Till now, we don't have this side effect and maybe later it could be a side effect of the statins. Number three is that they're addictive because once I'm on the medication, I cannot get off the medication, which that means that it, it is addictive. And this is not the meaning of addiction. 
the meaning of addiction is completely different. Statins are not addictive at all. Number four is that statins are useless and that we should not be taking them at all. And that's not true at all. Because statins, again, are needed for whom are really needed. It doesn't mean that everyone which have a high cholesterol just because they have a high cholesterol, they should be on statins. And if you think that these videos are useful, please remember that the best way to support us it's very easy. It's just to hit the like button here in the red button, subscribe, and remember to hit the bell so we can tell you every time that we make a new video. Till next time.